beautiful people of the internet. It's Jackie, your friendly neighborhood Hufflepuff and resident Stark lover here. And today in this video, I am really excited for it. I want to sort the characters from my favorite TV show, Game of Thrones, into Hogwarts houses. I've seen people sort the different characters before and sometimes I just don't at all agree with where other people place the characters. So today I just wanted to give my two cents on what Hogwarts houses the different characters of Game of Thrones belong in and if you don't agree with my choices then you can sound off in the comments and let me know where you would place them. There are so many characters on this show that I can't possibly get to all of them in one video so this is going to be a two-parter. So in case you haven't read Harry Potter or just want a little refresher on what each of the houses represent, there are four houses in Harry Potter, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff. That's my house. And each one has a set of traits that people in that house represent or hold dearly. Gryffindors favor bravery, nerve, courage, chivalry, and daring. Slytherins favor resourcefulness, cunning, ambition, determination, self-preservation, fraternity, and cleverness. Ravenclaws favor intelligence, wit, and wisdom, creativity, originality, individuality, and acceptance. And Hufflepuffs, my house, favor dedication, hard work, fairness, patience, kindness, tolerance, loyalty, and are also said to be unafraid of toil. So now that you know all the different houses, I'm going to tell you which houses I think the characters of Game of Thrones belong in. And I'm going to start off with one that I think is pretty obvious, Jon Snow. Jon Snow, in my opinion, is just the ultimate Gryffindor. I mean, Jon Snow is the closest thing that Game of Thrones has to a Harry Potter-esque character. He is super brave, has a lot of courage, and that can result in him sometimes being a bit of a self-sacrificing hero. Yes, Jon Snow may know nothing and he may not be the most astute in politics, but no one can say that he isn't willing to put his life on the line to help others. And that, in my opinion, just makes him the ultimate Gryffindor. Another character that I thought pretty obviously belonged in Gryffindor was Arya Stark. However, I was surprised to see that a lot of people disagree with me and would put her in Slytherin. I think she definitely belongs in Gryffindor though, because even though Arya does have self-preservation and survival skills like a Slytherin, I don't think she is an ambitious person. And I think that all of the acts that she has committed have been with the goal of getting her back to her family, to her pack. So while I do agree that Arya has some Slytherin traits, I think that she's more focused on her family as a whole than herself and putting herself forward in the world. I think bravery is definitely her defining characteristic as a character. And that's why in my mind, she is 100% a Gryffindor. Honestly, I feel like pretty much all of the Starks are Gryffindors. The Starks are just the Gryffindor family. I guess they're basically the Game of Thrones equivalent of the Weasleys. Like I can just imagine one of the younger Starks going to the Hogwarts for the first time and having the sorting hat placed on their head. And for the sorting hat to just immediately go, oh, Oh, another Stark. I know exactly what to do with you. Another character who I think fits very well into one of the houses and is a pretty obvious sorting for me is Tyrion Lannister. I think Tyrion is 100% a Ravenclaw. Tyrion, due to his dwarfism, was never able to fight like other men, so his mind has always been his weapon. As he says, a mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone, and Tyrion is one of the most intelligent characters in the entire series, in my opinion. And where would we be without his amazing, witty one-liners? Yeah, in my opinion, Tyrion is 100% Ravenclaw, 100%. Now we're going back to House Stark and the other two living Stark siblings were not as easy for me to sort as Jon and Arya. Bran, for a second, I thought about putting in Ravenclaw because as the Three-Eyed Raven, he knows everything that has ever happened in the world, giving him a lot of intelligence. 
However, thinking back on young Bran, I think he is also a Gryffindor. Before Bran was crippled, he loved to climb and explore and wanted to someday be a knight. I think that shows he has a lot of bravery. Also, when you think about it, Bran took a big risk by going beyond the wall to find the Three-Eyed Raven. Someone with less courage definitely would not have done that. He easily could have reunited with his siblings and given up on his quest, but he persevered, and I think that shows that he is a Gryffindor. Now, Sansa is a little more difficult to sort because I think you could make arguments for her being in several different houses. At first, I thought maybe she was a Ravenclaw because like Tyrion, I think she is someone who is very, very intelligent and is very strong politically. She has a head for politics. Or maybe you could say she's a Gryffindor because she survived all these horrible events and persevered and came out stronger. But to be honest, I think Sansa is actually a Slytherin. Hate me for this if you want, but Sansa, like I said, has a great head for politics. She knows how to outsmart an opponent, and she has learned a lot from some characters who I think are clearly, clearly Slytherins. So I think at the end of the day, she is defined by her resourcefulness, her cunning, and her ability to survive in difficult circumstances. Also, even before Sansa got put through the ringer, she always dreamed of being a noble lady or even a queen when she grew up, and I think that shows some ambition on her part. So, as I just said, I think there are some characters that Sansa has learned from who are clearly, clearly Slytherins, and one of those people is Cersei Lannister. Cersei is without a doubt a Slytherin in my opinion. She is very cunning and very ambitious and she constantly works to advance her position in the world. Cersei looks out for herself, she goes after her own best interests, and really the only people that she has any loyalty to are her children. Cersei has a lot of Slytherin determination. No matter how bleak her situation looks, she does not go down without a fight. She is always planning her next move and trying to think of how she can advance her position. I don't think she will ever give up. She is going to keep calling herself queen until the very last moment. And I think that in season eight, if there comes a moment where she knows that she can't beat Jon and Daenerys, she would rather burn the whole city down with wildfire than accept defeat. This shows that she is 100% a true Slytherin. Now, a lot of people would probably place Cersei's twin, Jaime, in Slytherin with her. However, I disagree. I don't think Jamie is super, super ambitious as a person. I don't think he has super lofty goals for himself. And I think all of his morally poor actions were all out of loyalty to Cersei. So maybe you would say he's a Hufflepuff then, since loyalty is one of the Hufflepuff defining traits. However, the Hufflepuffs are also defined by patience, tolerant, tolerance, and fairness, and I wouldn't say those are Jamie's defining traits either. I definitely don't think he's a Ravenclaw, not to say that Jamie is stupid. I just don't think it's, again, it's not one of his defining traits. He is not the most intelligent. He has some intelligence, but he's definitely more street smart than book smart. It is implied in the show that he had dys has dyslexia, so that's why he's not as bookish as Tyrion. I actually think that Jamie is a Gryffindor. A lot of Jamie's actions, I think, go to show his bravery. He has been a great fighter since a young age and was a member, became a member of the Kingsguard when he was only a teenager. This takes a lot of bravery to put his life on the line constantly like this. And it also, if you think about it, takes some bravery for him to have stabbed the Mad King in the back, knowing that he was going to come off looking poorly, but also knowing that if he did it, he was going to save the lives of the people in King's Landing. And him finally deciding to turn his back on Cersei and ride north to honor his pledge is also something very courageous because he knew there could be bad consequences for him, yet he did it anyway. Now, as you may or may not know, I am a huge brainy shipper, so I want to talk about my girl, Brienne of Tarth, next, and I am taking a bit of a controversial take here. I know a lot of people would put Brienne in Gryffindor, and I can understand why they would do that, but I actually think she is a Hufflepuff. 
Yes, Brienne is definitely brave like a Gryffindor, and like a Gryffindor, she seems to value chivalry, having an ideal perception of what knighthood should be. However, I think Brienne's defining character trait is really her loyalty and dedication like a Hufflepuff. She definitely goes out of her way to protect the downtrodden and takes her vows very, very seriously. Brienne is, in my opinion, a pretty tolerant person, and she does believe in fairness in the books almost to a naive extent, with, like I said, her ideal perception of true knighthood. She also shows a lot of hard work and dedication. She worked so hard to become a skilled warrior, even though other people looked down on her for it. And I think, like a Hufflepuff, she is unafraid of toil. In my opinion, she is a real Hufflepuff. I can understand why people would put her in Gryffindor. I think that is more of a secondary house for her though, and I think her loyalty defines her above all else. Another character that I am sorting into Hufflepuff is Samwell Tarly. While Sam is very bookish and intelligent, like a Ravenclaw, he does have the Hufflepuff loyalty. He is extremely loyal, especially to Jon Snow. I think he is patient and kind and fairly tolerant of others. I think he is a hard worker and he does enrich himself with learning in a Ravenclaw-esque manner, but he also has persevered and tried to find more bravery and courage. And I think that shows that he is a Hufflepuff because he never gives up. The odds have been against him time and time again, but he is dedicated and he keeps trying. And he is just the sweetest and softest character in Game of Thrones, with the exception of some child characters, I suppose. But in my opinion, he's just, he's very, very Hufflepuff. Finally, I have a, another controversial pick, and that is I think Daenerys Targaryen is a Slytherin. Now, I am not one of the absurd Daenerys haters. In fact, I love Daenerys, and she is one of my favorite characters. But not all Slytherins are bad. Slytherins are just the easiest to corrupt because they are so ambitious. I do think that Daenerys is a good person, but one cannot deny that she is very ambitious and ruthless in her pursuit of the Iron Throne. She is willing to do what it takes to get what she wants, which is something that I admire in her. She is very, very determined and has a black and white sense of justice. I think she also has survived in some very bad situations. She told John in one of my favorite scenes from season eight that the belief in herself is what helped her survive all those years. And that shows a lot of faith in herself and a good survival instinct. She knows how to survive even the worst of circumstances. And she never gives up in pursuit of what she wants, showing in my opinion that she is a Slytherin. Now, before I go, I'm going to do a really quick lightning round where I say what house I think a character is in and just give a quick one sentence explanation as to why, not going into too much depth because these are all more minor characters and I think they're pretty self-explanatory. First of all, I said that Sansa has been educated by a lot of Slytherins, and I think Littlefinger and Marjorie Tyrell both fit into this category. Littlefinger and Marjorie, love them or hate them, are both very clever and cunning, and they had lofty ambitions which they were relentless in the pursuit of. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them, but we can't say they didn't try. I think they were both very, very clever characters. Gendry, in my opinion, is a Hufflepuff. I know that book Gendry is more sullen and stubborn than TV show Gendry. However, I think he really exemplifies the Hufflepuff traits of hard work and dedication. He went from being a lowborn bastard to a Master Smith that is now serving Jon Snow, and I think that shows that he has worked really hard to get where he is. Gilly is also a Hufflepuff, along with her man, Samwell Tarly. Tormund, I think, is easily a Gryffindor. He is very, very brave. I don't know if there is anything that man fears. Ramsay Bolton, who is one of the greatest villains ever, in my opinion, is 100% a Slytherin. This man was really, really evil, but you can't say that he wasn't cunning and clever. And he was just relentless in pursuit of what he wanted. Then uh, Joffrey Baratheon, the character I'm going to end on, 
Um, if I had to sort him somewhere, I guess I would say Slytherin. However, I don't think he's particularly cunning or clever. He has a very high opinion of himself and is very ambitious with what he wants, but he doesn't have any of the good Slytherin qualities. So I feel like Joffrey would, in all honesty, be a squib. <laughs> So guys, that is part one of my sorting Game of Thrones characters into Hogwarts Houses videos. I am going to make a part two of this video where I sort the rest of the characters because there are many more that I want to discuss. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. If you disagree with where I sorted any of these characters, feel free to make your argument in the comment section. I am looking forward to reading them. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye! See you next time!